to minister to these your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation and knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted, and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, tonight I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. Thank you that every ear is anointed to hear, and what they hear tonight will make a mark in their lives that will never be erased. We praise you for it now. Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord a big hand clap of praise, amen. You may be seated. It's going to be good tonight. All right. If you have your Bibles, um, go with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and uh, verse 18. Tonight we're going to talk about being filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit. What does that mean? And, you know, I, I think sometimes we become so satisfied with a bit of truth, then we make it the whole truth. And I think I'm more satisfied with getting the whole truth instead of a bit of truth. And there's a lot of bit of truth about being filled with the Holy Spirit that we have traditionally absorbed. Not to say that what you have was wrong, but it's like it's a bit of truth. And, it's, and, and you want to you wanna know the whole, the whole thing here. So this, this, is, this is what this is going to be tonight. I want to I wanna make sure I go line by line. This is pretty fascinating once you, you get to see this. The thing that fascinates me all the time is, it, is when I discover it was in the Bible the whole time. It was a matter of context. Say context. context. It's a matter of paying attention to the context of a thing. And then it begins to bring scriptures like, you know, submit yourself one to another. Husband, love your wife. Wait, what was that all about? Why did he even start talking about that? Believe it or not, that is a part of what it means to be filled with the Spirit of God. So let's get into this. Um, we're not only called to walk dependently upon the Spirit, okay? We're called to walk dependently upon the Spirit. That's all we've been talking about for years, <laughs> to walk depending on the Spirit of God. But our lives should be overflowing with the work of the Holy Spirit as well. A life that is overflowing with the work of the Spirit. Uh, now, we know that God started the work and he's doing the work. So our, our life should be overflowing with the Holy Spirit, Spirit's work and evidence of the work, working of the Spirit in us. So we're able to, uh, uh, we're able to, uh, to, to, uh, to increase or to abound in the grace of God when are we able to increase and abound in the grace of God when our lives are overflowing with the presence and the work of God? The presence yielding, the presence and the work, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. The presence and the work of the Holy Spirit. So tonight, tonight I really want you to really be sensitive to, you know, the path in our living that leads us to the presence of the Holy Spirit. He is real, and as Christian people, we should know about and experience the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life, not just in our emotions, but presence and working of the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the presence of the Holy Spirit that produces that work in your life, the presence of the Holy Spirit that's producing the changes and producing the results that you see in your life, producing the change of desire, all those things you see in your life. And so those two things come together. So Ephesians 5 and 18 says this. One version says, and do not be drunk with wine in which uh, dissipation, dissipa, dissipation occurs. Or oh, that just simply means don't be drunk with wine where squandering is concerned, you know. Uh, or don't be drunk with wine uh, that will, will uh, come to the point of being, uh, cause things to disappear. So he's saying that, you know, for all y'all got the wine question, okay? Just, just let, you know, some of y'all look disappointed, like, God dang. You know, 
just, just, just hold on a minute here. See. <laughs> he said, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, the, the, um, the New Living Translation says this, and I, and I like this translation. He says, because he's talking about context here now, and he, there's a reason why he's saying this. He said, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Now, why is that going to ruin your life? He said, instead of being drunk with wine, I got a better idea. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. All right, so I, I, we need to deal with that scripture. I've heard it, but what is he saying here? You can, all, you can also translate this as be always being filled with this Holy Spirit. Being, be always being filled with the Holy Spirit. The verb here is in the present tense. So it encourages us to be filled at all times every day with, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, our lives are not to be controlled by things like human influences, like wine and such things that will cause a, a, a squandering and the tearing down of our lives. So he says, don't allow your life to be influenced by things that can tear it down. Don't allow your life to be influenced by things that can squander your life or cause your life, uh, good living, to disappear. Our lives are not to be controlled by things like human influences. And what he was talking about is don't be drunk with wine. He says, don't let an addiction to wine or anything else cause your life to to, to squander and, and to, to tear down. So the thing, you got to ask yourself this question, what is it that you are allowing to take place in your life that's causing, that's tearing your life up? What's, what's tearing your life up? Uh, what type of toxicity are you allowing to tear your life up? Being drunk with wine, he's just saying walking around drunk all the time is going to tear your life up. The wine ain't the problem. You're just drunk with it. <laughs> and, and when it's time to get a job, it's going to tear your life up because you're too drunk to be coherent. You, you follow what I'm saying? He says, so what else besides being drunk that can tear your life down? Because the Holy Spirit wants to, he says, instead be filled with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is trying to do the opposite. He's trying to build your life up. But you need to be aware of things that you are allowing to tear your life down. And that could be other people. Toxicity exists in relationships as well, right? And so instead of laying, instead of being drunk, all right, that's, he just adds some more description to it. Instead of being, don't be drunk because it'll ruin your life. That's what he's saying. Don't be drunk because I, I can't tell you the number of people I've, their life was ruined because they were drunk. He said, instead of being drunk, with wine, mad dog. It doesn't make you feel better. Red Lady 2020, Brass Monkey. Instead of being drunk, he said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So then, what is, you know, uh, we ought to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me back up. We ought to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're Christians, so we ought to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I never could get, just really get my hands on that being filled with the Holy Spirit. So, so what does that mean? What does that look like to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Um, somebody says, well, that means you're, 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 you're speaking in tongues. And I, and, and I made that the sum total. I did. I don't blame anybody for that. I made that the sum total in my understanding that being filled with the Holy Spirit was just kind of actually, you know, just praying, speaking in tongues. So now I'm filled with the Holy Spirit because I speak in tongues. The speaking in tongues may be a part of it, but that ain't nowhere near what he's talking about right here. Okay? So, um, so the question is, what is the evidence of being filled with the Spirit? How do you know you're filled with the Spirit? The Spirit works in different ways for different people. That's what I do know. I know the Holy Spirit may do something a certain way in your life, that he might do not do it the same, thing, the same way in somebody else's life. You know, it's cool to have testimonies, but don't try to force your revelation on somebody else because the Holy Spirit is unique based on who he's dealing with. 
because he knows who you are, right? Okay? So the Spirit works in different ways for different people. There is no standard or an absolute, uh, uh, no standard, no absolutes regarding uh, the Holy Spirit and how he works. We, you, that's what we got to be careful of. Okay, that's how it worked with you. It may not be the same way with somebody else. And so you cannot, you know, listen to, well, Pastor Dollar said it, the Holy Spirit worked with him this way. Well, that's me, okay? You got to understand the Holy Ghost knows your origin to where you are right now. So he know you. And he knows, he, knows, he knows exactly what needs to be done to have whatever effect he's trying to have in your life. Now, Ephesians chapter 5, very interesting. Let's go there. Ephesians chapter 5. Let's look at it in the NLT. And let's begin at verse 18. Ephesians chapter 5, New Living Translation, and in, and in, and in verse 18. So we see, we see a, a great list of the results of being filled with the Spirit of God right here. So he's going to tell us evidence, show us evidence and results of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Because we're talking about, you know, it's better to be filled with the Holy Spirit so he can build your life up than to be drunk or influenced by other human influences that will tear your life down or squander your life, okay? Now... Verse 18, so now watch this carefully. Say this out loud, context is king. Context is king. Okay, so I'm just going to stick with context here. All right, so evidence. So it says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the, the Spirit, comma, he started to tell us what that means to be filled with the Spirit. He, get ready to tell. he said, but be filled with the Spirit. Let me show you the evidence. Let me show you what this looks like to be filled with the Spirit. He said, singing songs, hymns, spiritual songs among yourself, making music to the Lord in your heart. Wow. And give thanks for everything to God, the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, you being filled with the Spirit, and look at, look at the evidence of being filled with the Spirit, Okay. And then he goes, verse 21, and, and he says, and further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, submitting yourself one to another, the King James says, out of reverence and respect for Christ. That's what being filled to the, uh, with the Spirit looks like. He's given you, this is the evidence of what it looks like, okay? And so far we see, you know, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart because you're filled with the Spirit, so you do that. You're giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're submitting to one another in the reverence and, re and respect and the fear of the Lord. We, see, when you see someone walking in great submission and humility out of respect and reverence for God, it is an evidence of the full work of the Spirit of God in their lives. So these are tied directly into being filled with the Spirit. You see submission and humility. Submission and humility. It comes from being filled with the Spirit. But then you go to Ephesians chapter 5 uh, and 22. He says, uh, and this is in the same context. For, for, for wives, this means submit to your husbands as you submit to the Lord. In the same context, he says, that happens when you're filled with the Spirit. Then verse uh, 25 addresses the husbands. In verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church. Uh, that's evidence that you're filled with the Spirit. Uh, it, and, it, and, it, and it doesn't end there. In Ephesians chapter 6 and 1, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That, that, that's evidence of the working of the Spirit. And then Paul continues, he says, You fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Still in the same context of being filled with the Spirit. And then Ephesians 6 and 5 goes on to talk about employees. And then Ephesians 6 and 9 talks about employers. And the most extended explanation of the Spirit-filled living that you will find in the Bible is located in Ephesians 5 and 6. And this tells us how to live at church, how to live at home, how to live on the job. That's the working of the Holy Spirit, showing us how to live. 
Don't be afraid to live. The Holy Spirit was sent here to show you how to live. Amen. Amen. If you then being evil, look at Luke 11 and 13, uh, pull it up in the NLT. Luke 11 and 13. Okay, so the thing I want to show you there, you got to stay in context when you're reading all that. We normally leave the fill with the spirit part out and go right into talking about the marital roles and family roles and all that. And he's like, don't do that. Because now what you're doing is leaving out the key part, and that is, that is the Holy Spirit that's going to help you do these things. Amen. All right, now, watch this. Uh, before I read the NLT, it says, he says, if then being evil, know how to give good, good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The NLT says, so if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, and please turn your phones off so I won't hear, hear the music and stuff. <laughs> okay, if somebody called, might, might cuss you out, and I don't want that to get on the tape or in TV or nothing, so if you could, turn your phones off. You control your phone, amen? <laughs> so if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to who ask him? So God the Father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Not only does this apply to salvation. All right, so what happens when you get saved, you're like, God saved me. You, when you get saved, you get the Holy Spirit too because you can't get saved without the Holy Spirit. So when you got saved, you got the Holy Spirit. You will never, you can't separate that, that work. That work uh, of the Spirit of God or the Spirit of grace, we were saved by grace. That work of grace was by the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, but, that, but that doesn't apply just to salvation. It also applies to your sanctification. What do I mean by that? The Holy Spirit is going to work to separate you from worldliness to God. He's going to separate you unto God. So the work of the Holy Spirit is to separate you unto God. He's going to do a work in you, giving you a desire and the power to please God. He started the work. He'll never leave you by yourself to finish the work. And he'll be done but when Jesus comes. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's on him. Listen, if he started to work in you and you got born again, and he ain't finished the day Jesus come, it's his fault. Because that's what he said. And I believe him. All pressure gone. I'm not sweating to try to become something that God already knows what I'm supposed to become. He started it. He will finish it. And it'll be done when Jesus comes. Ain't no this thing about, well, when Jesus comes, what if I ain't ready? I will be ready. You will be ready if we trust in the work of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will not only, did, did, not, did not only take part in salvation, but it, took, it will take part in sanctification. If the Spirit of God is not in our lives, however, and that, that, then, then, then we're not born again. <laughs> if the Holy Spirit is not in your life, then you're not born again. When you got born again, Holy Spirit's in your life. I See, I don't want you to ever confuse this with, well, I'm born again, but I don't talk in tongues, so that means the Holy Spirit in my life. No, 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 no. If the Holy Spirit's not in your life, you're not born again. Amen. And the reason why I know the Holy Spirit is in your life, because you are born again. Amen. You made a decision to yield and get born again, and the Holy Spirit is now in your life. So as we humble ourselves and we humbly ask the Lord Jesus for forgiveness at, like we did in, in a new life and then we admit we admit our need then the Father will send the Holy Spirit with new life and that's what happened you admit it I can't do this I need to be saved I need you to come into my life he did that and what happened the Holy Spirit now has been sent to you you have the sent one in you right now if you got born again and made Jesus the Lord of your life, the Holy Ghost is in there. Amen. When did he enter in? The day you got born again. Amen. All right? Now, so unfortunately, many Christians fail to apply this verse in regards to sanctification, that he's in there to do a work, what? To separate you unto him. 
So we all as Christians have the Holy Spirit, but the real question is whether or not the Holy Spirit has us. We have the Holy Spirit. How much of you have you given to him? That's the whole game right there. How much of you have you given to him? It's called yielding. How much of you have you yielded to the Holy Spirit? If you can't tell, I'm so excited about this because I ain't even got to the good stuff yet. And it's good already. <laughs> Think about it. You ask yourself that question. You who are here, those of you who are watching this uh, at home, how much of the Holy Spirit, uh, how much of yourself have you given the Holy Spirit? So watch this. The fullness of the Spirit means that he totally has us. The fullness of the Spirit. See, you would think, well, the fullness of the Spirit. I have the fullness of the Spirit. No, the fullness of the Spirit means he has us. And that's the path that I hope we're all on. I know this, that's the path I'm on. I am totally looking at my life and recognizing I have not given that to the Holy Spirit. I have not yielded that to the Holy Spirit. He doesn't have that. That's mine. And I don't know if I want to get that to him. Not right now. <laughs> you know, I give him a little Sunday. I give him a little part of that, a little part of that. But, but that's, that's the whole deal. The fullness of the Spirit means that he totally has us. So that is, he has the room to work in every area of our lives. Have you given him the room to work in every area of your life? That's what this is about giving him the room to work in every area of your life. Say this out loud again with me. Say, Lord, help me not to deceive myself. Lord, help me not to deceive myself. You don't think the, work, the Holy Ghost needs to work in any area of your life. That's deception. There's lots of work that needs to be done in your life, all right, and in all of our lives. We who have the Spirit can ask the Father to send the Spirit's full work upon us, what the Scriptures speak of in Acts 1 and 8. You know, you'll receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Acts chapter 1 and 8, you'll receive power. I, I, you know, as, as the church, we always choose the fable so we don't look and see what he's really saying. I don't really know what I thought when I heard this. You shall receive power. I, I don't know whether I thought I was going to have Superman power or some kind of fable. But, but power is just, it means the ability to get the job done. And what he says in our life that's being changed, in our lives that we're submitting with the Holy Spirit, he says, I'm going to give you power to get that done. Up until now, people in the Old Testament don't know nothing about this. Everything they did, they had to do in the flesh. And flesh produced flesh. That's why they could never keep the law. They were in the flesh. You needed the help of the Holy Spirit. And one of the things I know is I have power now by the Holy Spirit to do what I can't do alone. Amen. To do what I can't do by myself. I tried and I tried. Tried all night long. I tried and I tried until I found the Lord. Several things wrong with that. You trying and the Lord ain't lost. <laughs> and then I prayed and I prayed. How long you pray? Prayed all night long. How you pray? I prayed and I prayed until I found the Lord. No, I'm trying to get you free from your self-effort. Your self-effort is futile. God already knows it. He already said in his word, I already know man is just dust. You need him. You got to have him. There is no metamorphic Change of the spirit without you giving of yourself to the only one that can help you. That's why it doesn't do you any good to get mad at God. You mad at the only one that can help you. Let me calm down. Whew. I got I gotta get back in shape because when I holler like that, I get a little dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm less dizzy than I was last week. Amen. All right, watch this. 
The fullness of the Spirit is a work of the grace of God. What does that mean? That means that it cannot be bought, it cannot be earned, it cannot be conjured up. We must simply ask, we must, that's, stop, period, that's a period. We must simply ask, period. Simply ask. And you know what? When you ask God something, that is humility and faith right there. It takes humility to humble yourself. Listen to what you're doing. To humble yourself and ask God, help me, Lord. And then by faith, receiving the help. Help me, Lord. And so I don't have no one event where I say, help me, Lord. I, that's how I start my morning. Lord, I need you today. Amen. Heaven say, how you know I need you? Because I'm human. Yeah. I'm dust. And I need you today, Lord. I need you today. Ain't no telling what I'm going to run in today. What's going to confront me today? And I need you today. Yeah. This morning I ran into an American Express lady who couldn't get it in her head that I'm not sending you all of my identification through the internet. <laughs> Do you know what time we living in? And she kept going with her script. I'm like, put the script down. <laughs> Ma'am, you can't, you can't help me. Put somebody on the phone that knows how to be creative to help me because you, you stuck on your script. <laughs> And she said one moment, and then kept me there forever, and then I had to start looking over my, my teacher for the night so it could keep me. I need you. I need you. I ask you, Lord, help me right now. Because that old man, I thought he was buried. I, I want to jump through that phone. He helped me. Lady came back. She said, give me your cell number. She called it Moon. That's you? Yeah, that's me. She said, all right, it's approved. Go on, do it. I said, see, just somebody that... But now I got to apologize to the lady. I said, ma'am, I, I want to apologize. <laughs> now watch this. If I sound a, a little, you know. It, well, no, if I was sounding like that. <laughs> God, dog. No. I'm like, I got to go through this to send you more money? <laughs> it's humbling. Yeah. And faith to ask God. It's awesome, though. To ask God, this becomes a part of your life. I am asking for your help, Holy Spirit. I'm turning this over to you, saying that I need you. That's fullness of the Holy Spirit right there. Oh, my gosh. Ooh so Paul prays a greater prayer. Uh, let me show you this, Ephesians chapter 3. Because this is the prayer all of us need to start praying. I started praying this, this prayer some years back. All of us need to start praying this prayer right here. It's big time, okay? There are two great prayers here in Ephesians 3. And we should not just be reading them, we should be praying them. Look at Ephesians 3, 16 and 19 in NLT. Ephesians 3, 16 and 19. Here's what he says. I pray from his glorious unlimited resources. <laughs> he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. His glorious, unlimited, he's got unlimited resources. Why wouldn't you ask him? I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, that he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. And you're, you should be saying, Lord, I pray that today that you will empower me through your glorious, unlimited resources and give me inner strength by your spirit. Verse 17, he said, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. Lord have mercy. And, and, and you did. You, you decided to trust God. You, you got born again, and he made his home, his abode in you. He says, your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Lord, I thank you that your roots are growing down into uh, into God's love, and you're keeping me strong. Verse 18, and may you have the power to understand, as God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep is his love. Lord, I thank you today. I have the power from you to understand how wide, how long, how deep is your love. 
There's something put in a song a long time ago that said, Deep is your love, how deep is your love. <laughs> BGs, wasn't it? I don't know what the rest of the song said, but I remember that part. I don't know who love they were talking about, but whoever love they claimed was deep. If it wasn't God's love, God loved deeper than whoever they were talking about. He says, Lord, I want to I wanna pray this. I want to pray this to see this happen. Verse 19. And may you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. He says, I want you to have some of it. I want you to experience some of it. You're not going to understand it because it's too great for dust balls to understand it fully. See, that's the thing that's going to shock a lot of folks when they get to heaven. You think you understand God's love. You don't understand God. And that's why I'm thinking, if you're going to be a Christian, you need to be full of the Holy Spirit. And if you're full of the Holy Spirit, you ain't hating nobody because of the color of their skin. You ain't hating people because they got issues. People got all kinds of crazy issues. But the love is deeper than the issues. And Christians don't feel, they don't get that. They're still trying to come up with a, a rule to condemn somebody. Well, you know, God don't like ugly. You need to quit that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, Lord, the Holy Ghost will say that, but he's, he's doing something better than just condemning somebody, telling them what they need to do. He's actually working with them to work it out. Yeah. And I know some of the things in your life, you're, you're, you're wondering, am I ever going to be free from this? Yes. If you keep humbling yourself and saying, I need you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help me to see these things. Praying this prayer like this. Yeah. Yeah, you, there'll be a day that you'll wake up and the thing you used to want to do, you just don't know what happened to it because you'd have no desire to want to do it. Because the, 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 I think I said this last week, no matter what you do or no matter what you used to do, it all is based on the desire. And God's working on that desire. And you're changing. Amen. Every now and then you need to go in the mirror and, 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 and just, just kind of lift your hands up and say, Lord, I'm changing. Look in the mirror and say, who is this in the mirror I'm looking at? <laughs> who is this? I done cussed him out a long time ago. But I, I sure have changed. And God will start showing you little areas where you sure have changed. You're like, boy, if that had been three weeks ago, if that had been three weeks ago, yeah, but you see the working of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So you all right. You're changing. It may not be a big change. And, and, my, and nobody, you know, might have, you, you might be the only one noticing the change. That's fine. But you are not the same. Amen. So this prayer is directly related to being filled with the Spirit. If we seek the Lord in such a prayer, we can expect that our lives will be more and more characteristically uh, be filled with all the fullness of God. And if we ask anything according to his will, guess what? We will, have, uh, we will have those things that we ask for. So there's no safer, you know, ask things according to his will. Of course, there's no safer way to pray than to pray directly out of the word of God. That's the best way to pray. This, this is a prayer directly out of the word of God. You know, it's the very will of God. So some people say that they never know what to pray about. Well, the Word of God is a great place to start. Well, I don't know how about to pray about that. Well, pray the answer. Go find your answer in the Bible and then pray it. That's heavy. Now, it might not sound as pretty as all the little poetry stuff. Find the answer and pray it. God said he'll supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Father, I pray and I thank you that you will provide this need. All my needs are met according to your riches and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Then last long, don't need to last. I ain't praying all. I ain't got time to be brown with somebody. somebody can I pray for you? Well, how long is it going to be? Because I got to go. <laughs> right? All right, go to John 7, 37 through 39 in the NLT. Now, let's, let's get started here. So I said, started. Yeah, that's just, I'm trying to feel trying to figure out where y'all at with all this. John 7, 37 through 39. This is awesome. Uh, 37 has, it says, on the last day, the 
the climax of the festival, Jesus stood, shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Wow. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scripture declares, rivers are living water. Rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. Now let's make the, milk this a little bit. So uh, uh, the uh, other translation says, on, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, uh, the, uh, King James says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And, and I don't know, I don't, I, I don't quite understand how I was you know, taught that, but we, we'd always say out of our bellies and then we justify you know, oh, that's, that's where your tongue's coming from. No. Out of your heart is the original translation here. Out of your heart uh, flows, will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So once the Son of God would be back at the right hand of the Father, once Jesus was there at the right hand of the Father, the Spirit could be poured forth. Spirit can't come forth. You know, that's what Jesus told the disciples, you know. If I don't go, then I can't send another comfort to you. To you. But when, he, when I send him, he'll lead and guide you into all the truth. So Jesus is speaking about how one can enter into that fullness. It is very simple. Yet it's real subtle how he says this in the scripture. If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. What does that look like? And that was, that was always my struggle. What does that look like? I'm, I'm thirsty. And you know he's not talking about in the natural. He said, if you're, if you're thirsty in the natural, go get some water. All right? But he uses that as symbolism to, to give a, get a message to us. In other words, if anyone has a spiritual need, bring that one to Jesus. And let him come to me and then drink. Well, how do you drink of Jesus Christ? What does that look like? Basically the same way you would a glass of water. You come to a glass of physical water to quench physical thirst, and you take it believing that it will meet the need to clear out your thirst. So if we bring our spiritual thirst to Jesus, believing that he will meet the need, then that is called drinking. Not drinking, drinking. <laughs> How do I drink from Jesus? Believing that he will meet the need. Amen. Amen. I'm thirsty. I've got a need. He said, if you're thirsty, come to me and believe that I'll meet the need. Come to me and drink and believe I'll meet the need. Come to me and drink. How, what does that look like? Believe that he'll meet the need. Yes, Jesus, I'm coming to you because I'm thirsty. And I need my thirst quenched. I need this thirst to stop. I need the pain to stop. I need the problem to stop. I need the addiction to stop. He said, well, drink from me. How I drink from you, Lord. Believe that I'll meet the need and stop it. Isn't that good, y'all? I don't know how we've been taught, but there are certain things you don't see until you see it through the eyes of grace. So from this point on, you will get thirsty sometime with whatever it is. A thirst of debt, a thirst of brokenness, a thirst of depression, a thirst of loneliness. But whatever the thirst is, Jesus said, I'm water. I've sent you water. And that water abides on the inside of you. Come and drink. Think about it. You got water with you everywhere you go. You just ain't drinking from it. 
You drinking from worry? Huh? You drinking from despair? You drinking from selfishness? Come to Jesus and drink. Hallelujah. And then invite somebody else to come. You're thirsty. You want some water. Would you like something to drink? Ha! Yeah, I ain't coming to your house no more. Would you like something to drink? Hallelujah, praise God. And look at the, I, I like, I, I want to read 38, 39 again. He says, uh, uh, John chapter 7. Uh, where is that 38? Where is up there? Okay. He that believeth on me, that, that's it. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart or his belly shall flow living waters. By what? Just believing that he can do it. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. It, see, here's the deal. He's in you. But it's, it's really talking about the water coming out of him in you. It's not talking about you trying to give yourself credit for the water. <laughs> now, the living water is the Holy Spirit living in you. Yes, and out of him, the flow starts into your life, into your need, taking care of your thirst. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. See, the world is going crazy. All kinds of stuff happening. Er, acceleration and frequency going on. And all I know is, that, Lord, let's, let's, let's become, let's, let's, let's get intensity in the word. Because yeah. yeah. this, this, this might be the only hope the world has. That's how, that, this how that, that revival that has been prophesied about, that great move of God, yeah. I'm telling y'all people are going to start running to the church yeah. because of the yeah. invitation to come and drink. From those who carry living water. Hallelujah. You can drink some H2O or you can drink some Holy Ghost. You understand? But H2O ain't going to meet all of your needs. So I figured, well, Lord, this is this, this all I can do. Just intense, intense. Just get that word out there. Get it out there every day. Get, if you'll notice on my confessions, I'm doing more teaching. Get it out there. Just get it. Just feel it. Just surround them by it. Get it on a podcast. Get it on a, on a social media. Get it on TV. Get it on radio. Get it out there on print. Get it out there on books. Get it out there. Get it out on satellite. Get it out there on cable. Get it out there. They'll get it one of them. God, God said to me one time, he says, you have no idea how I'm able to use the medium in which you are preaching the word to get it out. He says, I done got it out to people you don't even know. And, and that's the reason why he talked to me about that, because I, I get up in the morning, and uh, while I'm fixing my breakfast and everything, I get up there and I'm looking at the broadcast. I say, that show good. I wonder if anybody saw it. <laughs> and every now and then, my TV guy and marketing person, they come in and say, you wonder if anybody saw it? He'll look at this. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, a lot of people saw that, didn't they? God is calling us yeah, amen. to invite people to come and drink. Yeah. Amen? amen? All right. All right. I didn't read verse 39, did I? Let's see. 38, 39, but this spake he of the Spirit, which they believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So now, if we believe that Jesus can quench the thirst in our lives, that is, in other words, if we believe that he can meet the needs in our lives, quench the thirst, meet the needs in our lives, for example, Fulfilling the yearnings and the insufficiency in our lives, then that is drinking of him by faith. That's what that means. That's drinking of him by faith. So if we keep doing that, if we characteristically do that, then it is assumed that that will quench the thirst 
if we keep doing that, keep keep believing that he's that he's met, met our needs, keep believing that we can de depend on him. So if we keep doing that, then you know we're, we're, the thirst is going to be quenched. And if you're thirsty, come unto Jesus and do what and to drink. But you know what? It goes farther than that. He who believes in Christ or keeps believing that Christ can meet those needs out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. This is a picture of bringing our need to the Lord in faith. And then watch this. He gives to us a thirst quenching drink of the Holy Spirit and it's and, and like I said just remember it's not it's not only meet me meet, meet, it, it, given to us to meet our needs but he builds us up in living water so that we can overflow onto the lives of other people you are about to flood somebody's life out you are about to overflow into somebody else's life so by consistently coming to Christ, he quenches and satisfies me with living water. And when I concentrate on him, he fills me till I overflow. He fills me until I overflow. Now, this is the best way to minister because we are so full of the living water of the Holy Spirit. So we can continue to come back to Jesus. He continues to pour living water in us. So we simply overflow on other people. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. There are going to be situations that arise in your life. Normally, you would use your brain to try to see if you can come up with some way to deal with that situation. But if you'll just start drinking from him, it'll start overflowing on somebody else. It'll overflow in wisdom. It'll overflow in compassion. It'll overflow in love you'll find yourself experiencing dispensing the overflow. What is that scripture, Lord? My cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. So what do you do with the, the stuff running over with the cup? You distribute it. Well, that's, he, he's trying to make you that cup and trying to get you into overflow. To where what's flowing out of you becomes contagious. Joy flowing out of you becomes contagious and you heal somebody of a sad day. Overflowing. And I, I'm telling you, this is the life of, 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 of living filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what this is about. Living the Spirit-filled life. A life where you're depending and trusting on God. Whew. The clock says zero. Piano man ain't up here, man. What's Court and got all caught up and everything. And <laughs> Could you lift your hands up, one hand without wrath, the other without doubt? So, Lord, continue with this revelation. Give us revelation of what we heard tonight. Ah, uh, we come before you. We drink of that water, that living water. We trust that you can meet our needs. And we trust that what you do in us and through us can be made available to somebody else. Oh, God, you're good. So good. Thank you. You are his majesty, the king. And we worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. Fill our cups and let it overflow. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Oh, I'm
want to. <laughs> amen, amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. At this time, we want to give anyone the opportunity um, who has not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, the opportunity to do so. So congregation, if you all would repeat this with me so no one feels ashamed or alone in this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you admitting that I am a sinner. I know you sent your son Jesus Christ to die for my sins. I receive that free gift of forgiveness. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. World changers, let's give it up for those who just joined the body of Christ. Amen. If that was you and you just prayed that prayer of salvation with me today, text the keyword, I'm saved as one word to 51555, provide your name and email address, and we will get a free ebook to you as a gift today. Amen. Now it is our time for our gift giving, our tithes and offerings. If you need an envelope, please raise your hands and our ushers will provide one for you. And at this church, we give out of our heart, not out of necessity, not out of force, under no pressure. We trust God in everything that we do, and this is just another expression of that. So I just want you all to have peace. No matter the amount, don't ever feel like you're giving too little. Don't feel like you can't depend on God, even though it may be your last. No matter what, just trust Him in everything you do. Let the Holy Spirit lead you, just as Pastor said tonight. So if you all are ready, you can lift up your seed, your phone, envelope, whatever it is, even if you're giving by faith tonight. We also have a few ways on the screen for those on stream as well. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you thanking you for this seed sown by your loved ones. We trust you. We know that you provide every need that we have, Lord. We will never lack because of what you have done through your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. You take care of us, and we trust you, and we believe you. And I thank you, Father, and I claim that every seed song will be met in a hundredfold.